story. All the ingredients have been in place for explosive fires around the area. Red flag warnings were hoisted on both Saturday and Sunday. One of the biggest brush fires in Argyle. Fire crews across Washington County were helping to put out the flames today. And then two hours south of there, crews in Columbia County also had their hands full with a massive brush fire in Ghent. Chris Glomier was at both scenes today. He joins us live with why these fires are especially tough to put down. Chris? Greg, we had all of the key ingredients in place over the weekend. A dry ground, strong gusty winds with winds up to 45 miles per hour, low humidity, so it turned fields of brush into fire and cinder. You can see this. That's what is behind me. Acres and acres of charred farmland. Uh, the biggest fire, though, was just to the north of here, about two hours into Washington County, where crews were on the scene throughout the entire day today. The wind kicks up, the amber start blowing through, and as you can see, this is what happens. Conservation officer Jeff Dempster says this started because of an unattended campfire. The fire started Sunday, and crews from throughout Washington County remained on the scene Monday. This is what Route 196 looked like today, but this is what it looked like yesterday. R.J. Harris sent us this picture on Facebook. Emergency coordinator Bill Cook took us through the fire zone. How quickly can something like this spread? Uh, very quickly, um, and, and it did. It started, like I said, it moved right up this valley. Uh, I think it consumed roughly five acres. Firefighters were first called to the scene Sunday afternoon when it was a brush fire, but that brush fire also contained piles worth of rubber tires. You can see this all throughout the property, and you can see what the heat of the fire did to this pile of tires. In this case, it, uh, it was left unattended. Uh, they thought they had, they had extinguished the fire. They did not. Although there's a burn ban across the state, campfires are okay, but you need to make sure they're out. Bring jugs of water with you. Uh, if, you if you're out in your backyard, you run a garden hose. Uh, bring uh, buckets of water. If uh, have a shovel, put dirt on it. Move it around. Make sure the embers are all out. Make, you just make certain. It's just common sense. We're not sure the exact cause of this fire, but I want to show you a couple of things. How close of a call this really was. That's Route 66, where the fire initiated. And with a strong southerly wind up to 40 miles per hour, that fire traveled so close to this home on Humane Society Road. I want to show you that house right over there. Just to the right of that house is a shed, and the vinyl siding melted because of this fire. There were red flag warnings out, which means conditions are favorable for rapid fire development. There's no contradiction between a red flag warning and a burn ban, which is in effect until uh, May 15th. So there is no burning outside unless it's a campfire. You just need to be smart how you have those campfires and you've got to make sure you're there the entire time, Greg. Yeah, got to observe that burn ban. Now, Chris, it's not just that though, right? There are some other ways that brush fires can start. There are, as I mentioned, uh, this fire, they're not sure how it started, but it's very close to the road. You want to use extreme caution when you're disposing of cigarettes. Also, catalytic converters hmm. from cars. I spoke with a local expert who said if farm vehicles drive onto their fields and they park, those catalytic converters can heat up to 1,000 degrees. So these fields can combust if they leave their trucks, say, on top of these open, spans, open expanses, and it can become an explosive situation. Wow, I'm, I'm glad you said that. I would not have thought of the catalytic converter. Thank you very much, Chris Gloninger, reporting live.